Relation between skin friction and wall shear. To derive a relation for skin friction and wall shear. Basically skin friction, we, I already explained you what is the meaning of skin friction. To derive this relation between skin friction and wall shear, we apply Bernoulli's equation. Fine. Here also we assume the system which we have assumed for the first derivation. Remember that a tube, we have assumed a small discrete element of the fluid, shear stress acting on that fluid is tau, radius of that fluid is r, radius of the pipe is rw. For that system, we are deriving this relation. So here we are applying Bernoulli's equation to a pipe over a definite length of delta L for the complete stream. Let P1 be the pressure at the upstream of length L, P2 be the pressure at the downstream of length L such that P1 is greater than P2. So, delta P is the pressure drop over length delta L. That means, we have taken one element of length delta L. From one side pressure acting P1, downstream side pressure acting P2 such that P1 is greater than P2. So, my delta P is the pressure drop over length delta L. And what is that delta P? Delta P is P1 minus P2. Fine, as P1 is greater than P2, delta P is the pressure drop over length delta L. So, delta P is equal to P1 minus P2. So, I can write that P2 is equal to P1 minus delta P. Fine. Now, now we are going to apply Bernoulli's equation. We all know very well what is Bernoulli's equation. I can write this equation, Bernoulli's equation, P1 by rho plus alpha 1 u1 square by 2 plus zz1 is equal to P2 by rho plus alpha 2 u2 square by 2 plus gz2 plus hfs. This is the Bernoulli's equation. Here, HFS is the skin friction. Generally, for friction loss, we are using the term HF. But when I am writing HFS, that is the skin friction. HFS denotes the skin friction. Now, here, for this system, which system we have taken for our first derivation? Now, in this Bernoulli equation, in this case, Z1 is equal to Z2. Why? Because we have taken the horizontal pipe. So, for horizontal pipe flow, Z1 is equal to Z2 because the datum level is same. And U1 is equal to U2. Fine, because the steady flow is assumed. So, in this case, Z1 is equal to Z2 and U1 is equal to U2. And the friction exists in the screen friction between the wall and the fluid stream is HFS. HFS is our skin friction. So, when in Bernoulli's equation u1 is equal to u2 and z1 is equal to z2, now the equation becomes like this because u1 u2 term and z1 z2 term in the whole Bernoulli's equation will be cancelled out because z1 is equal to z2 and u1 is equal to u2. So, now the equation is reduced to this much. P1 by rho is equal to P2 by rho plus HFS. I can write this equation as like this. Here I have put P2 is equal to P1 minus delta P. Can I write like this? Fine. Because I have already explained you in the previous slide that delta P is equal to P1 minus P2. So, P2 is equal to P1 minus delta P. So, I here I have replaced this P2 is equal to P1 minus delta P. So, now P1 by rho is equal to P1 minus delta P by rho plus HFS. So, HFS is equal to delta P by rho. When I am writing this equation in terms of HFS, what it will be? HFS is equal to this term goes on this side. So, P1 by rho minus P1 by rho plus delta P by rho. So, P1 by rho, P1 by rho cancel out. So, HFS is equal to delta P by rho. This is my equation number 1. Fine. Now we know that 
dp by dl plus 2 tau w by rw is equals to 0. From where this equation comes? This equation comes from our first derivation. Fine. I have already told you that each and every derivations are interconnected. So, you have to remember some of the equations. These equation dp by dl plus 2 tau w by rw equals to 0 comes from our derivation number 1. So, I can write this dp by dl as delta p by delta l, it is one and same thing. So, dp by dl plus 2 tau w by rw equals to 0 or I can say delta p by delta l plus 2 tau w by rw is equals to 0. Now, I can write this equation in terms of delta p. What it will be? Delta p is equals to minus 2 tau w by rw into delta l. See, I have written that. Delta P is equals to 2 tau W by R W equals to delta L. Why am I have not written minus sign? Because see here, delta P is what? P1 minus P2. So, I can write delta P which is P1 minus P2 is equal to minus 2 tau W R W into delta L. But if I am writing P2 minus P1 that the minus sign will be changed. So, that's why I have written delta P is equal to 2 tau W by W into delta L. Now, from equation number 1 and 2, when we are comparing these two equations, 1 and 2, you will get HFS is equal to 2 tau W by rho R W into delta L. Why? Because HFS is equal to delta P by rho. That is our equation number 1. HFS is equal to delta P by rho, which is equation number 1. And delta P is equal to 2 tau W upon R W delta L. So, in that HFS delta P by rho put delta P equal to this. So, now your equation is HFS is equal to 2 tau W delta L upon rho R W. So, this is the equation which gives the relation between skin friction and ball shape. HFS is equal to 2 tau W by rho R W into delta and skin friction is the tangential friction associated with the fluid flowing over smooth surface. When a fluid flowing in a pipe, only the skin friction that exists. That means when we have considered a system of a fluid flowing in a pipeline, there is only one friction that exists which is skin friction. So, this is my equation of relation between skin friction and wall shear. Skin friction is HFS and wall shear is tau W. So, this equation gives the relation between the, these two HFS and tau W, skin friction and wall shear. Now, the next topic is flow through channel of non-circular cross section and equivalent diameter and hydraulic radius. Basically, when the section or any channel which is not in circular that means in non-circular. So, for non-circular channel, we use a term which is known as the equivalent diameter and that equivalent diameter is 4 times hydraulic radius. Now, what is hydraulic radius? Basically, hydraulic radius is the ratio of cross section of that channel to the weighted perimeter of the channel. So, you can see here equivalent diameter is 4 times hydraulic radius and hydraulic radius is the ratio of cross section area to the weighted perimeter. So, when we have a object which is uh, not in a circular shape, but in any non-circular shape, then at that time we have to use this term which is equivalent diameter and equivalent diameter is 4 times hydraulic radius and hydraulic radius is the ratio of cross section area to the weighted perimeter, right? Fanning friction factor which is denoted by small f. To derive this, first you have to understand why we are using this fanning friction factor. You have to remember that the fanning friction factor is specially useful in the study of turbulent flow only. That means when we, when we derive this equation at, at the end of this derivation, that equation is only used for turbulent flow. It is never used for the laminar flow of the fluid. It is defined as, the fanning friction factor is defined as the ratio of wall shear stress to the product of kinetic energy of fluid and density. 
I have defined this spending friction vector f in the form of a definition or in the form of a statement. It is defined as a ratio of wash shear stress that is tau w to the product of kinetic energy. What is kinetic energy? U square by 2 and density rho. So now I can write the equation of f. f is equals to tau w upon rho u square by 2. That, that is all I have written in the definition. f is the ratio of wash shear stress that is tau w to the product of kinetic energy u square by 2 into density rho. So f training friction factor f is equals to tau w upon rho u square by 2. Now the when I can I can also return it as 2 tau w upon rho u square. I am just rearranging the equation in the form of tau w. So tau w is equals to f rho u square by 2. Just rearranging the equation, nothing else. And we know that HFS is equal to 4 tau w by rho d delta L. This comes from our previous derivation. Right. From previous derivation, I have the equation of HFS which is equal to 4 tau w delta f upon rho d. Now, put the value of tau w in this equation here. See. These put this tau w value in this HFS equation. Fine. Putting this tau w value in HFS equation, we have HFS is equals to 4f rho u square delta L upon 2 rho d. Just putting tau w value in HFS equation. Simplifying it, HFS is equals to 4f rho will be cancelled out. 4f u square delta L by 2d. Fine. Now delta L can be replaced by length L. L is the total length of the pipe. So I can write the equation HFS is equal to 4FL u square by 2D. Fine. And we know that HFS is equal to delta P by rho. This also comes from our previous equation, previous derivation. So put HFS is equal to delta P by rho in above equation. HFS is 4FL u square by 2D. Put that HFS equals to delta P by rho. So comparing these two equations, delta P is equals to 4F rho L u square by 2D. Right? So delta P is equals to 4F L rho u square by 2D. So this is the equation for calculating pressure draw for turbulent flow. And this equation is known as fanning equation. Above equation is used to calculate the pressure drop due to friction for turbulent flow. It is known as fanning equation. This is the fanning equation. Delta P is equals to 4F rho L u square by 2D. And it is used to calculate pressure drop in case of turbulent flow. This equation will be used when we will solve the examples for calculating pressure drop in case of turbulent flow. So this is very important. Remember this equation. Fine. And this is known as fanning equation. So in today's session, we will cover this much. I am completing here my lecture. Thank you.